H22A4 piston connected to F23 rods. Regardless if you are using an F23 block, H22A4, it will stick out because of the uh, piston compression height is different than the K20. But some other people have run it like this. They were using type S piston and they never have any problem. But make sure that if you are sourcing an H22 head, just make sure that this indicator is not being shaved in two. Otherwise, you are losing that clearance right here, this quench area. And it doesn't look good when that, this thing that sticks out on the block, that thing will be touching that. Okay, but of course you still have the head gasket and it's better to uh, to check. Okay, the more clearance you have, the better it is. And if you could run E85 fuel, that would be even better. Well, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's episode is connecting rods uh, I'm gonna talk about a little bit of uh, connecting rods and how to install a pistons on the rods uh, it looks so simple right uh, what's the big deal about installing a connecting rods onto the piston this really is more into it uh, it's something that uh, you really have to pay attention when you're building your motor. Uh, you gotta make sure that your clearances is all correct as far as the um, the board diameter. Because when you first get a, let's say you got a motor from the junkyard that's got like 200, 300,000 miles in it, you don't know the uh, the history of it. So you really have to do your inspection the big end and the small end make sure it's not worn out and also maybe later on well i have two sets here a k20 and an h22 and i am also going to put the h22 a4 and stick it into the block so that way you guys will see or will give you an idea that without modifying the H22A4 that it will stick out past the block about 20,000 or more and I will talk about that more as I get into it whether you use a H22A4 or a type S piston which is it will even give you more compression ratio probably be you'll be pushing like 12 something So without really paying attention on when you put these two together, yeah, it could lead to a potential uh, engine problem. You know, as you put more hours into it. Because uh, if you don't put these two halves together correctly, uh, the bearing could uh, overheat in time because uh, the clearances is too tight. And you might end up having a spun bearing and later on you would have a a rod knock yeah that's right on a freshly new rebuilt motor you already have a rod knock yeah something knocking in there uh, see they they put those numbers for a reason that when they bore these when they bore these in the machine they it has to it has to be put on on one side only you cannot flip this around otherwise it's not perfectly round anymore but that number in there it's a code from the company i think it's a i believe it was a uh, a code for a bearing size or something like that i'm i'm not sure but as far as i know you cannot have this thing installed backwards, meaning the other way around. But people have done that before and 
Some may have a problem, some did have some problem. But it's better to put it back from how it was. Just follow those notches. Those notches are supposed to be facing one another. And always have those markings together. That way, no problem. Or just simply follow your service uh, manual instructions. I'm gonna touch up a little about the uh, inspection on checking the big end and the small end as far as like the uh, the board diameter. So you should have something a little bit like this. It's not really that expensive, guys. Um, a micrometer, a vernier caliper, and a T gauge. You know where I got that from. It's not fancy as uh, everyone does, but uh, something like this, you know, I get by. So it's just nothing but find your right size or the right uh, T gauge and just simply put it on there and do like 180 or 90 degrees, just crisscross and get your vernier caliper and just do that like that or your micrometer caliper and do the same thing for the big end it's the same thing also just drop it in like that just play around with it up and down make sure you have a slight drag you're in center and basically the same thing right there so once you get all your numbers and you compare it to your specs and you right there so once you find out you're good to go and if it's not within spec something that uh, it's kind of oddball then send it to your machine shop and have them recondition it i'm going to install the k20 first and i'm gonna share more info on how to install this and also the h22a4 will be next but i have to modify this piston Remember the uh, the skirt. I can't stick this assembly onto that block. Otherwise, I'll be cutting the uh, <laughs> the old squirters in half or in two. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how I modified this too. So if you ever attempt to use the old squirters on your H22A4 with this combination f23 rods and h22 piston uh you take your own risk i'm not be liable if anything goes wrong with your uh engine okay uh, but i'm gonna show you how i do it why are we picking a k series piston to connect it to the f23 connecting rod it's because of the piston compression height this one have the same as the f23 which is 30 millimeter compared to H22 that has a 31 millimeter. If you put a H22 on the block together with F23 crank, this thing will stick out, which is I will show you later on. Okay. So I'm gonna put my uh, safety glasses on and also when you put this uh, K series on the connecting rod, remember the uh, the name or the what do you call it, the stamp number. It'll be facing the timing belt. So when you put this together, you have to flip this thing backwards, which is you saw that on my video, and it'll be facing like this. That the intake side will be facing. The exhaust valve on the G23. It will be backwards. So let me uh, put this thing together like this. And as far as the lock pin, this thing have a this hole right here. If you can, try not to put the gap 
lined up to that axis right there put it the other way around or away from it and when you put it together let me show you let me see if I can do it all in one shot Put it like that and get a, a screwdriver or a pick and push on it the reason behind that is so if you want to remove it you use your pick and you just That always put your fingers on on there just in case it uh, it snap back at you right there and you just give it a check make sure you're on that slot give it a turn or something there you go see so if you want to remove it stick your pick just pry on it it'll come off okay never do this on <laughs> your uh, piston assembly <laughs> it can put some stress or some load on this and you might crack this i know it, it sounds try to uh uh try to prevent the the piston skirt going uh making all that sound okay it's not a toy <laughs> all right just make sure that the, uh it's pre-floating that's what the name is it, it pre-floats it goes side to side compared to uh a press to fit piston wrist pin like a p13 it's really it's tight it's a tight fit on the connecting rods next is the uh, h22a4 piston but before i install it on the f23 rods i have to modify this piston where to uh, grind it is you just have to find where the nozzle is gonna be and it's always on the intake side it's either on the left or the right which is already uh check the squirters and it goes on my left so i'm going to grind it all the way up to almost to this flange that line some of you might disapprove of me doing this because uh you know like I'm messing around with the balance and all that but I already have a, a successful motor when I did this and I have shown you guys that I don't have a problem as far as uh, some uh, abnormal wear on the skirt so it's already been proven I think that should be good enough yeah don't worry if this piston is already uh, wasted anyway so. cool let me share to you how I did that uh, on the last video that you guys saw at the end where I showed the uh, Civic Type R piston that I heavily modified what tooling I used to cut the, the relief is I made the, the cup a little bit uh, smaller. All I did was, well, this one is already uh, smaller as is, but insert it, right? And use my file and grind it through to the size. So after I got done with that, then you, as you can see, this is not the one, I use a different one. But look, right there. That's how I got away with it. And I just copied the intake, bring these two together closer, like that. That's how I did it. It took a little while and a steady hands, but uh, 
I managed to uh, to do it. Okay, uh, installation of H22 A4 piston on the F23 rods. Whenever you're uh, assembling a brand new piston onto your connecting rods, just verify that the uh, wrist pin will go in and it will move freely. Verify the uh, stamp, PAA. It will be facing towards the uh, timing belt and the H22 piston will be installed correctly this time which is the uh, arrow will be facing the timing belt so it will be facing to the timing belt together see what I mean oh man okay <laughs> yeah. Alright, arrow and the stamp. Okay. Just push it with the screwdriver or Make sure it turns. Not there yet. There you go. I'm on there now. How about this side. Yeah, it's all locked. All locked in. And this side. There you go. See the gap where I put the lock ring? I didn't put it aligned on that axis right there so away from it so that's how you install a H22A4 on the F23 connecting rods stamp and arrow and correctly compared to a K20 which is backwards see the stamp right and if you look it on top the K20 piston is backwards So if you are using a K20 piston, right, you would have a orientation differently than the H22. So you are building a, a G23 that it used to have an F23 piston in it and it rotates the same as H22. Just to prevent the confusion, regardless if you are using a K20 piston, Toss that away, that instruction, and just follow the H22 or the F23 seal rings orientation. As simple as that. And if you are using a an aftermarket forged piston, then just follow the manufacturer's recommendation. Now let me talk a little bit about forged connecting rods for F23. When you get a forged connecting rod, let's just say that this is a forged connecting rod for F23. It would not have no marking whatsoever. It might have a name, whether it, if it's uh, Eagle or Molnar or Max Speeding Rods. But make sure to mark it. Put a, use a marker or something that Put down front and also pay attention just copy the original connecting rods on how the uh, the notch are faced together so yeah for example right like this the uh, notches is on the left side yeah just mark it this will be the front side so you won't get mixed up and also put some mark here the Ford's connecting rods I know it it has a identification as far as the halves you know it's a match set it's a number but if you put those notch together facing one another you would not have any problem okay it's important 
for demonstration only, this is what I'm going to use. I have one ring on here just so the piston would not rock back and forth. When you use your uh, ring compressor, make sure you just put it in within right about in this area. Don't put it all the way here because this skirt is much wider than this area. So you could really put it on there squarely. Okay. See, I just barely passed that, the last ring. And try not to uh, move it so much. Just put your hand like so and give it a, a squeeze. That way you don't rotate the, the gap from where it's at. It's going to move, but if you can avoid it, Okay, let's put it on. So when you drop your piston, just put it on there slow and give it a tap to uh, get a square. And when you tap it in, make sure that if you feel like it's binding, then you should stop. I'm just gonna give it a hand tight it's just for demonstration so there it is that's what it looked like with the H22A4 piston on the F23 rods whether it's h22a4 block or f23 block more than twenty thousand. well it's it rocks back and forth that's why but if i can keep it in the center so it will stick out All right guys so if you have a type s piston you will have more compression ratio because the dome will be sticking out but once you put your head gasket on there your head gasket is 26,000 so it's almost flush but some people don't have a problem with it okay guys that's what it looked like H22A4 piston installed on F23 connecting rods and inside the block. With that thing sticking out like that. But don't get me wrong, there's really some people run it like that and they never have any problem. But make sure that you will have enough clearance on this flange that your cylinder head is not being maxed out then you're losing all that clearance right there and if you are running e85 for fuel then you're all set to go and make sure you complement your high compression ratio with a type s cams or something like skunk 2 yeah the pro 2 or tuner cams will be golden man yeah the problem with running at too much high compression ratio is you have a possibility of destroying your spark plugs. You would have a detonation before it would even ignite. That's the problem. And it, it's an explosion inside the combustion chamber rather than uh, you know, a regular ignition yeah. or a, a combustion. Yeah. So yeah, run E85 if you are running too much high compression. Yeah. Okay, that's just about it as far as showing you guys the connecting rods. And I will put this thing back together, all together and show it to you guys. Alright.
Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys back. Bye bye.